Learning and practicing data science can be really tough. Trust me, I've been doing it now for nearly four years. I have dealt with all the complicated maths equations and all the complex codes. However, I now know how to deal with it a lot better due to these five so-called secrets that I've picked up along the way. And in this video, I want to share them with you. Let's get into it. So this is the Bellman equation, which is the fundamental equation behind reinforcement learning. And let's be honest, no one really understands what's going on in this equation the first time of looking. Courses, university degrees, online resources simply just chuck equations at you and kind of expect you to know what they mean. Sure, these mathematical equations like tell you exactly what's going on, technically, but they're not very intuitive whatsoever. I remember when I was first learning about neural networks, particularly backpropagation and the feed for process. There was all these superscripts, subscripts, layers, just weird notation that was quite complex and really hard to decipher what's going on. Now, when a situation like this happens and I have this equation and I don't really understand what's going on, I don't just stare at it aimlessly for hours, waiting for that quick eureka moment to happen and it all to click in my head. Instead, I take a step back and think, well, what is this equation trying to do? When mathematicians and scientists come up with theories and frameworks and all this mathematical notation around the subject, they start with an idea or a concept, and then that idea and concept is translated to this mathematical framework, not the other way around. One effective strategy that has really helped me is basically just kind of ignoring the equation and going through what the original people who made this theory did step by step. Take neural networks, for example, like I just mentioned before. Instead of trying to understand backpropagation from looking at all the equations, what I would do and what I did is that I simply just did it all by hand. I went through every layer, did every derivative, and basically just wrote out the algorithm, but without kind of thinking about the overarching equations. I just followed the process end to end. And because you know the full process end to end, when you go back and look at the equations, you can really understand what's going on at a deeper level. So to sum up the first secret is that when you look at algorithms or loss functions or anything that's quite densely mathematical, always take a step back and look at basically what is the equation trying to do and why is it doing this? I am sure we have all been there, well, at least I have, where I'm watching a YouTube video on someone implementing a fancy transformer model using PyTorch. And I think to myself, yeah, this looks easy. I'm gonna try it too. And then after five hours of sitting at your laptop, your code looks like this. Just the imports and nothing else. Coding is difficult if you didn't know that already, but combining coding with the intricacies and all the mathematical details of data science doubles how difficult it really is. The amount of time I actually spend as a practicing data science manually typing code is probably like 5%. In most cases, I'm just sat there thinking about all the different implementations that I could write a function for, or how I write this class. I probably go over so many iterations in my head, and maybe around one in 20 probably actually get written out on the IDE. Then most likely that first bit of code that I've written out probably doesn't work, and then I've got to spend more time debugging it. This can be frustrating, but I wish someone told me that coding is not simply just writing out code. Coding is a whole thought process and debugging process. Because you're thinking about code, that is coding. You're thinking about how you're gonna do something. And by going over those iterations in your head, you're basically just thinking in a programmatic way. Even if you're not writing it out, you are carrying out the coding process, even if it's not physically on a device. Trust me, no one is smashing their keyboard for eight hours straight with green lines going down the screen like you see in movies. I remember in my first data science job, the first ticket I got was to extract the model object from the train.py file all the way out to the entry point main function. This was the first time I ever worked in a proper project slash repo that was like production standard and used by the business to do a certain thing. And like many people, I found it really daunting. And to make matters even worse, where the model object was returned, the train.py file, 
I had to drag that up almost like 10 layers of abstraction to the main output of the whole repo. Now that I have worked as a data scientist for nearly three and a half years, I've better honed my skills on how I approach and deal with new code bases, particularly data science and machine learning ones. In general, these are the steps I take when trying to understand a new project or repo. I first begin with understanding exactly what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So I know exactly what's going into the repo and exactly what's coming out of the repo. I find the main entry point, literally called main, and I look at the inputs going in and what main is trying to do. So this is basically the inputs and outputs, but more of the code level. I then follow the main function all the way down to where the model is really trained. As a data scientist, I'm interested in the training part. That's kind of what my main responsibilities are. So I look for exactly where the model's being trained and all the function and variables that are kind of surrounding it. I then run the model, setting a debugger in my IDE so I can exactly see what are the inputs, what are its data structures, what do they mean, what does it hold, just everything around it at a really granular detail so I have a full grasp of how the model actually is being trained. This outside in approach really helps me because I start off the global picture understanding exactly what the point of this repo is and exactly what's going in and out of it and then I localize my view on the machine learning part which is what I care about as a data scientist. I really believe that one of the most underutilized ways of learning data science is simply through talking to people. In my work and many other companies, there are experts in optimization, forecasting, deep learning, recommendation systems, and many more. Whenever I have a question about any of these domains, I just reach out to the person who knows most about it in my company. If we are in the office, this is even better because I can literally just go up to the person and ask the bro five minutes of the time. The best part about this is that it's basically free. You have subject matter experts with years of experience and you can literally pick their brain for hours about this domain and ask any question you have. The final secret is that data science just takes time to learn. I get many messages from people asking, can I learn data science in three months? I mean, you might be able to learn data science to a kind of good enough level that you may get an entry level data role somewhere, but learning the whole of data science or learning it to a really good level within three months is pretty much impossible. I say this not to discourage anyone, but just to set expectations, but also show you that it is a slow process and not to put pressure on yourself. I mean, there are literally three year bachelor degrees nowadays on data science. I have been practicing data science for about four years. 3.5 of that has been professional. Yet I've only just recently started to scratch the surface of the more flashy things like reinforcement learning, transformers, and LLMs. During my journey so far, I've really prioritized learning the foundations like statistics, classical ML, and mathematical optimization. I'm a real big believer in building like the fundamental pillars and then improving your knowledge from there. Everything starts with a really strong foundation and that just takes time to build. So the next time that you feel stressed after not understanding back propagation from the first time of looking at it, just relax and realize it's all part of the process. So I hope these five secrets, well, to be honest, they're not really secrets, they're more like tips or frameworks that have really benefited me can benefit you in some way as an aspiring or practicing data scientist. If you want to hear more from me, then I run a weekly newsletter called Dishing the Data. It's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist, and I'll link it in the description below in case you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.